Hey there, this is Jeffrey. Uh, welcome to my instructional video on how to make a vintage style iron-on shirt. Uh, we're going to go over everything from materials you're going to need, how to apply iron-on transfers using a regular hot iron, um, how to best take care of your new vintage shirt to make sure it'll last for as long as possible. Uh, we're going to be creating two different uh, shirts in this video. Uh, one using a regular iron-on transfer, much like this one right here. And the second we're going to be using individual letters to make a phrase or statement on your shirt. Um, first off, let's go ahead and find a good iron-on. The best place I found iron-ons is eBay and Etsy. There's two, two different ways you can uh, look them up. One is just a general search, just, you know, you look up uh, vintage iron-on, it'll give you like hundreds and hundreds of listings and you can also use the eBay's category system where you can look up uh, into the craft section like toys and hobbies um, you can even find it under clothing you know mixed in with uh, shirts that are already made um, right now I just did a search for a uh, vintage iron-on and I came up with a bunch of cool different things uh, came up with the Grizzly Adams and Chewbacca, like the first two that came up is kind of funny. And then you got uh, like the Incredible Hulk, Tom and Jerry, uh, there's more Star Wars, um, here's Centipede, the video game, and you know, Oscar the Grouch. I mean, this is all, you know, cool stuff and, you know, you can scroll and scroll for days and days and days. Oh, uh, I like this unicorn. Right? Animal House, I mean, come on. You know, there's something for everybody on here. Uh, they can get pretty pricey sometimes, especially video games and bands, where they can go for $40, $50, even higher, if the seller thinks that they're uh, rare enough. Um, but don't worry, there's plenty of cool ones for $10 or less. Um... The important thing is that you find one that you're happy with and you're going to want to wear on a shirt, you know, every day for the rest of your life. And don't forget, we're also going to need a shirt, preferably a blank shirt. Maybe you already have one, maybe you need to get one. Like you can get one at a department store or a mall store, get a brand new shirt. You can head to the thrift store, go through all the racks, find a shirt. Or maybe even closer to home, you might have one in your own closet. If you already got a shirt, give an old shirt new life with an iron on. If you really want to take it up a notch, head back to eBay, head back to Etsy, and uh, try to look up, you know, vintage shirt. Get a real, actual, genuine vintage shirt. Much like with this one that I made, I put a vintage iron on on a vintage shirt. Automatic vintage shirt. There's uh, plenty of them out there. You just need to keep in mind that measurements on shirts were different back then than they are now. So usually you're going to need to know your measurements from, from inches from, from side to side and then from up and down. You need to know what kind of shirt will fit you best. One important thing that you're going to want to know is when you're getting a shirt is you want to get a shirt that is cotton or cotton polyester blend. Anything else you don't want to put an iron on to be safe. All right, here we've got our iron on. It is a parenthem in reverse. So when you look at it, the side facing up is going to go down on the shirt. We've also got our regular iron and a full size ironing board. You can also use a smaller ironing board if you has what you have. We've got our shirt, we're ready to go. One important thing about your iron is you're gonna want it on the highest setting, the hottest setting that you have on there. And do not use steam. Some of these, some of these kind, if you turn it all the way up, it's automatically steam. Go ahead and empty out the water. I always empty out the water. This one is empty, just to be safe. But I've got it up as hot it can, as it can go. Might take a couple minutes, let it heat up. All right, I think we're about ready to go. Let's go ahead and put our shirt on the ironing board. 
side to face. Try to center it as best I can here. I always find it difficult to, to center them just right. But you're gonna take your iron on, sticky side, face down. Try to line it up as best you can on your size. All right, I think I've got it centered just about how I want it. So we're gonna take our iron, go back and forth. You wanna to, want to apply some pressure too, because you wanna make sure that it's gonna stick and definitely get it heated all the way around. Gives you a nice even heat. And make sure you get nice edges are nice and down. Sometimes you can take a peek to make sure it's sticking. But you don't want to pull it off. It's very important that you don't pull it off while it's still hot. Alright, I think I'm done. I'm going to take it off the ironing board. Like I said, we're not going to peel it off till it cools. I'm going to go set it aside and we're going to work on our next iron on. Now right now we're going to make our second iron on shirt. We're going to be making a letter shirt, much like in the style of this, where you take individual letters on sheets like this. You can get these, you can even get these at Joann's or any Hobby Lobby, any kind of craft store will have letters. Or, like I said, you can find vintage ones on eBay, no problem. These ones are old. On a shirt like this. Make my record hot. What we're going to need to do for this shirt is, we're going, like I said, we're going to need these letters. We're going to cut them out with scissors. And we're going to apply them onto the shirt and run a hot iron over it. I'll show you how right now. Alright, this is the shirt I'm going to be putting the letters on. I'm going to set it aside for right now. I'm going to get out some letters. Let's see, what do I want to do for this shirt? I think we're going to use these uh, heart ones. These are uh, flock letter transfers. So we're going to go ahead and open these up. And we're going to have to cut her out, cut the letters individually. So I'm going to want a, a T. Set that aside. I'm going to need an O. What I'm going to be spelling out is Hot Hands, which is the name of my band. And this is a shirt that we're going to make and we're going to be uh, selling at our next show. All right, once you get your letters all cut out, you're going to want to arrange them on your shirt how you want them. Uh, I'm going to want these ones on this particular shirt to go across the top like this. And notice that they are backwards at the moment because I need to flip them over. But once I do, I won't be able to see if they're the right way. So I just want to double check, make sure the letters are all facing the right way. Like these ones have little hearts on them. So I want to make sure my hearts are facing the right way. So once I get it how I want, I flip it over like this. And D S. So hopefully this will be good. I think it will be. Maybe a little bit closer together. And some of these letters, you'll need uh, parchment paper to 
put over because you want some kind of buffer between your letters and the iron-ons. These particular ones, I don't think I need that, but it, I'm gonna do it just in case. So, always double check, make sure this be just right. Unless you want it to be off. If you want it to be off, you know, that choice is yours. Like, you know, this is your shirt, you know, to wear every day for the rest of your life. So at least be happy with it. Once again, the highest setting. You don't want to pray it. Move it around. You don't want to move around too much because you'll mess up your lettering. But get it just enough where it starts to melt on there. And then you can apply a little more pressure. So I'm going to get this going and then get my last few letters on this side. Just want to make sure your letters don't slip around. Then now I can think in, I can do a little more pressure on here. Can't wait to see how these are going to look. I'm going to check a square just to see if it's taken. It's not quite taking, so I'm going to go ahead and iron it on some more. Just a reminder, no steam. I've probably said that five million times, but All right, I just took it off the ironing board. I'm gonna set it aside to cool. Let's go look at our other shirt. See how it turned out. All right, here's the big reveal. Let's peel this back slowly. And it should just peel right off. Just go real nice and slow. Here we reveal Tempest, the uh, classic Atari video game. Slip that around. Pretty neat. Mm. I'm going to try it on now. All right, here is my new shirt. My new uh, Tempest shirt on a uh, baseball shirt. It's pretty cool, it's pretty retro. I really like it a lot. It's gonna be my new favorite shirt that I'm going to wear every day for the rest of my life. I like it. How did yours turn out? Hopefully good. Um, we got one shirt to check out left. All right, we're gonna slowly peel off the letters. You got an H. And if you ever find that the iron-on is still coming up and not staying on the shirt, that just means that you need to, to go back over it again with a hot iron. Because that will happen sometimes. Alright, so I've got H-O-T. All right, this is what it looks like. Hot hands. There's two bears fishing. This shirt's gonna be on my band's merch table at our next show. Maybe somebody will buy it, maybe it'll be you. All right, I wanted to take a minute now to tell you how to best uh, care for your shirt. Um, for washing, 
you're always going to want to use cold water. And the second thing is, you're not going to want to use a dryer. Don't use a dryer ever. Never, never, never. Because it heats it up too much and it'll just, you know, disintegrate it. And it'll, it'll crack and, you know, it might not even last, you know, one or two dries in a dryer. So you're going to want it to hang to dry after it comes out of your a washing machine. Which, of course, like I said, you use cold water only. Thanks again for watching this video on how to make a vintage style iron-on shirt. I've had fun making it because I ended up with a really cool shirt. I hope your shirt is just as cool. Um, if you have any questions, you can leave comments down below. Or if you can even share some of uh, the shirts that you're going to make. I'd want to see them. Be sure to watch the other videos on this channel. There's all kinds of videos. There's travel videos or just funny videos and, and probably more uh, videos like this, more instructional videos. Um, there'll be a lot of fun stuff. Be sure to check that out. Also, hothandsband.com is my uh, webpage where you can find out more about everything that I do on these webpages and that'll be real fun. Thanks again for watching.